she came home. Carlisle's lost an empire. You fall hard enough, you tend to be reminded of what truly matters. So, the end of the line. You ready for this? Are you? Who will you be without a score to settle? <laughs> I guess the world's most wanted fugitive will have to do. Alexa Carlyle is dead. According to the funeral invitation, that is. So naturally, it caused quite a stir when the late matriarch turned up at the breakfast table, alive and kicking. Carlisle, wisely sensing that her number is up, has emerged from exile to tie up loose ends and secure the Carlisle legacy. She may be a monster, but you have to admire her due diligence. Carlisle descends from an ancient line of warrior aristocrats. Her great-grandfather made a killing in the Second Opium War and established an empire in shipping, railroads, and newspaper publishing. While largely unknown to the public, the family still asserts its quiet dominance over global transport and logistics, media, and technology. Most senior of the partners, Alexa Carlyle, is cold as ice, tough as nails, and sharp as a razor. Incidentally, it was her late father who first brought the three families together after the end of World War II at this very house, meaning that this gentleman is the birthplace of Providence. It began here. And it ends here. Talk about poetic. One more thing. According to our intel, Carlisle keeps a case file on the constant. Information that may be helpful in his recapture. So don't leave the estate without it. Right. Happy hunting, 47. See you on the other side. Thornbridge Manor, the Carlisle family's home for countless generations. The revenant Alexa Carlisle and her three adult children, younger brother Zachary, grandson and daughter-in-law, are all gathered to conduct Carlisle's sham funeral. Curiously, Carlisle summoned a famous London PI soon after arriving this morning, but his purpose at Thornbridge is yet unclear. Now. The target knows that you're coming, and her guard detail is top-notch. So Mr. Gray will secure their nearby field HQ and intercept all calls going in and out of the estate. Any appeal for backup is going to fall on very deaf ears. Good luck, gentlemen. Whitmer, private investigator. I have an appointment with Madame Carlyle. Please wait. Mr. Whitmer is here to see Madame Carlyle. You can go right in. That is Phineas Whitmer, the famous private investigator hired by Madame Carlyle this morning. I'm curious why he's here. Maybe you should do some detecting yourself, 47. A famous private investigator summoned by Alexa Carlyle has arrived at Thornbridge Manor. If you take his place, 
It may be an opportunity to get close to Madame Carlyle. and then she turns up alive. But then the awful business with her brother Zachary, and, and all this security. I've never seen a place guarded like this, and, uh, and I dare say I don't like it at all. This is what I mean. She has to be passionate. Oh, by the way, I told Kate about those texts. What did she say? Well, I thought she'd be mad at me, but she just thanked me. Did she? Sir, I just need to check. That's a bit excessive, I think, considering the fact that I've spotted no less than two rooms to get inside the house. I don't think we know what we're doing, sir. Don't worry about that. Well, I thought she'd be mad at me, but she thanked me. But she understood the position I was in. Uh, we had a really good talk about it, actually. Oh, what did I tell you? She's a sensible woman, and that stuff from your ex was like manipulation 101. I know, I know. I guess I thought she was gonna read into them and freak out. Say I must have done something to provoke her. Shit, man. Caroline really did a number on you. coming on such short notice. A great tragedy has fallen upon us, and I need a quick resolution handled with absolute discretion. Results and discretion are my speciality. Very well. I suppose you will want to start at the crime scene. In my experience, a thorough examination of a potential crime scene is half the job done. Good. Fernsby will take over from here. I am Mr. Fernsby, the butler. Madam Carlyle has asked me to assist you in any way possible. Mr. Whitmer, I understand that you've traveled from London. Would you care for some refreshments? Or do you prefer to go straight to Mr. Zachary's sleeping quarters? I prefer to get started. As you wish. If you'll follow me, sir. I feel obliged to point out that current affairs surrounding Madame Carlyle are of a delicate nature. You may be familiar with the recent announcement of her death. You will probably learn that a staged funeral is scheduled to take place tomorrow. Madame's children were not informed until this morning that their mother was in fact not dead at all. So please bear with them if they seem affected by the rather unusual situation. I trust I do not need to remind you that there will be consequences if word gets out that Madame Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. Before you inspect the crime scene, I will tell you this. The case concerns the death of Mr. Zachary, Madame Carlyle's younger brother. He was found dead in his bed this morning. The door was locked from the inside and a suicide letter was found in his room. 
However, Madame Carlyle suspects foul play and will not accept that he took his own life. I've prepared some information for you, so please do come and see me when you finish your investigation of the crime scene. This is Mr. Zachary's room, to my right. A locked room murder mystery, 47. I trust you'll get to the bottom of this. Zachary's suicide note. Also, a sample of handwriting. It could be relevant to compare to other samples to establish its authenticity. Zachary was shopping for New Wellingtons last night. Not exactly what you would expect from someone suicidal. Why don't you use your camera to scan the dead body, 47? Throat markings indicate a rare, short-lived plant poison killed him. Spread shows time of death at around 10 o'clock last night. You do know your poisons, 47. secret passage. This could explain how the door was locked from the inside. Hmm, a photocopy of the floor plans. Somebody's been researching the secret ins and outs of Thornbridge Manor. I believe you've done a thorough search of the crime scene 47. Maybe it's time to see the butler. I'm curious about the information he's prepared for you. Mr. Fernsby, I'm done with the crime scene. Did you establish a time of death? Zachary died yes, around 10 o'clock last night. Well, that means the staff were off duty. And Madame Carlyle and her security didn't arrive until this morning. That leaves Madame's family and myself as the only persons here when he died. And before you ask, no, I do not have an alibi. I was alone in my office at the time of death. Here is the material that I've prepared for you. It's a list of the possible suspects and their quarters. Hopefully that will help you keep track of your findings. Please come and see me when you've solved the case, and I will take you to Madame Carlyle. This is very useful information, 47. So how does one solve a murder mystery, 47? Motive, means, and opportunity, I believe. May I suggest you ask the suspects for alibis? Or perhaps do you Sir. prefer searching the manor for clues first? Gregory Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, you're wondering about my alibi, Mr. Detective. Well, um, I left Thornbridge around half eight for a pint with Edward. I wish I hadn't. <laughs> Quiz night at the inn. 
On the other hand, staying here with Zachary, my obnoxious sister, the wife sporting another one of her headaches, would have been a fate worse than death. <laughs> the, the short of it, Zachary was very much alive when we left. I stayed for the last shout, and I was back here just before midnight. Anything else you want to pry from my intricate intellect? Tell me about Zachary. Zach? Huh. Such a sad old sod. A bit heavy on the bottle. But who could blame him? The only company he had was his rare plants and mother, who travels more than she stays here. Honestly, I can't say which is the bigger ball. He's better off dead. Is that all? Not very- Anything else you'd like to tell me? Nothing, really. I'm just enjoying the show. Our perfect mother obviously fucked up, didn't she? Faking her own death. You know, she's explained nothing to us. I think she's scared to own up to her own mistake. Emma Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Surely I'm not a suspect. I need to account for everyone. Well, I spent the evening with my family, but I got an awful migraine and had to take to bed. Everyone can attest to that. I believe I went up when the boys sat down for a drink around 8 o'clock. Anything else you want to know? How did you feel about Zachary? I might as well be honest. His presence was always awkward. How do you have a meaningful conversation with a man who only cares about plants? In my opinion, Alexa bears some responsibility for how this ended. She supported his self-limiting behavior by letting him live here. Is that all? Have you noticed anything else out of the ordinary? Nothing special comes to mind. Except, perhaps, I did get a feeling that Zachary was depressed, not just sad. I suppose he realized that he had no one with Alexa gone. Even Alexa must feel the pangs of guilt over that one, letting him believe she was dead. Then again, guilt isn't her strong suit. Rebecca Carla, can you tell me about yesterday evening? We don't really see much of each other, my brothers and I. I suppose it takes our mother's funeral to bring us together, and even then, it's not like we sit on each other's laps. Now, let's see. Patrick, Gregory's son, disappeared straight after dinner. You know, I think he might be in some sort of trouble. Edward wanted to go as well, but Gregory convinced him to stay for a few drinks before they went off for a pint at the local at a quarter to nine. I swear Gregory enjoys Edward's discomfort over staying here. I had a conference call with my New York office at nine, so I spent three hours on my laptop in my room and went straight to bed afterwards. I don't know about Emma. She did act a bit strange. You know, I bet she was making lists for changes needing to be done once she gets her hands on Thornbridge Manor. Quite the shock she had when Mother arrived during breakfast. Is there anything else you want to ask? Tell me about Zachary. Did he act strange last night? You know, now you mention it, he was a lot more chatty than usual. He wanted to know about my connections in the publishing business. Apparently, a friend of his is writing a book, which strikes me as very peculiar. I didn't think he had any friends. Is that everything, Mr. Whitmer? Anything else you feel like mentioning? I may be wrong, but I saw Mr. Fernsby, the butler, leave Zachary's room early this afternoon. And he seemed a bit startled when he saw me in the hallway. It's probably nothing. Oh, and one more thing. Please be kind to Edward. He can only take so much. Is there anything else you want to ask me?
How tall are you? You could be a model, you know. Right. I'm serious. I have a friend who's a model. She says that's the sweet, sweet life. You should come and stay at my place in London. We can have a come over. Give you some tips. I'm quite happy here, thanks. Patrick Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, shit, it's that sneaky butler, isn't it? He ratted me out. Elaine, give us some privacy, would you? Don't tell Mother, okay? She's really tense these days, and the last thing I need is more hassle. I took that pretty blonde, um, Rosie, uh, for an evening stroll. I mean, how the fuck am I expected to cope for an entire weekend in this shithole? I'm bored out of my mind. So, is that it? What did you think of Zachary? <laughs> Creepy as hell. No ambition. Imagine deciding to live in a museum. You know, Father says Zachary and Alexa used to be two of a kind. He had a great future ahead of him. Then suddenly, he just gave up everything. What an idiot. Thank God Daddy chose looks and brains over pedigree when he married Mummy. I don't have to worry about the inbreeding so customary in these circles. If that's all, I think I'll get back to my slow death by boredom. Did you see anything suspicious last night? No. I reckon Zachary tops himself. I know I would have. Or perhaps Mr. Fernsby. I don't like him. He could have done it. Um, hi. That's a little too close. Professor Edward Carlyle, can you tell me your whereabouts for last night? Oh, yes, this dreadful business with Zachary. I stay at the local inn. You see, I prefer not to spend the night here at Thornbridge Manor. My brother Gregory came along for a nightcap. He'll never admit it, but I think he understands that I find this whole thing upsetting and wanted to provide some comfort. I believe we went to the Stag's Head around half past eight. Anything else I can do to help? Can you tell me about Zachary's behavior last night? I certainly didn't expect him to commit suicide. Sure, he was upset by a mother's supposed death. We were. But he seemed more engaged than usual. You should ask Rebecca, they had a long talk. Did you know that he hadn't left Thornbridge Manor in nearly 50 years? His plants, mother, and the staff were all the company he had. If that's all? I have a speech to write. Did you notice anything else out of the ordinary? You mean apart from the fact that we came here to bury our mother and she shows up alive and kicking? Zachary found dead in his bed this morning? Or perhaps that the planned funeral is still taking place and I have to do the eulogy? And mother will surely have strong opinion on it afterwards. I can't breathe. Excuse me.
How are you today, sir? That is the door to Rebecca's room. I can see from the log that Rebecca was in a conference call from 9 p.m. to midnight last night. That is the door to Mr. Fernsby's office. immediately. Yes, I'll hold. It doesn't exist. What do you mean it doesn't exist? Right. I'll double check and get back to you. Arthur Edwards, can we get back what he stole from me? So far, it looks like we can't. All the transfers of funds and privileges I've been through have been bulletproof. He intercepted the arrangements our office worked years to put in place. That's why Don Yates should be here. He made the arrangements. He should bloody well be the one to clean up this whole mess. I, uh, I, I don't know what to say. I'm sorry. Don't kill the messenger. Please, continue your efforts, Mr. Ford. Did Yates mention anything about the Carlisle account? Yes, I'm in England now. It's all gone. Ron and I haven't been briefed about shit. What the fuck do I say to Carlisle? I feel completely blindsided here. I have no idea what's going on. It's, it's all gone. No, she's calm as ice. It's, it's just not natural. Nobody's that calm. It's gonna end in murder, I'm telling you.
had the shake before. What was he like? Did you fall for one of his No, you should probably so uh, I, uh, yeah. yeah, same. That door leads to Emma and Gregory's room. Now, this is interesting, 47. A letter from Emma's mother stating that Emma is the illegitimate child of Alexa's late older brother, Montgomery. And listen to this. She claims to have witnessed Alexa and Zachary murder him. The plot thickens. A keychain pendant for the greenhouse. What's that doing in Emma and Gregory's room, I wonder? And why is the key missing?
I don't believe for a second that Zachary committed suicide. We'd only just run through his plan for the spring seedlings yesterday. Yes, sure. But he, he was upset believing his sister was dead. I'd say worried about how things would be handled with Gregory and Emma taking over. I said that they didn't say anything. I never thought he was going to throw him out. Now we'll never know. How are you? Oh, stop pacing, for God's sake, Emma. Hello, sir. I Sorry, should get back I think to I... right. right, yeah.
Greetings, sir. Sorry, sir. You don't appear on my list, so you need to go. Can't you just relax for a minute? And that solicitor up there, why do you think... Oh. You want to check on that undertaker in charge of the funeral? I got word he's upset with Madame Carlyle. I bet it is sorry. No more of this jumping around acting all crazy shit. Stop it. Enough. Did Alice tell you what Emma did when she arrived? What is it now? She turned up and demanded to be put up in Madame Carlyle's bedroom. We're the new heads of the family after all. It is only fitting, she said. Well, Gregory was shocked at that, which was a surprise. He normally accepts his wife's outrageous behaviour without batting an eyelid. But staying in his mother's bed so soon was just a bit deep, I suppose. I 
your son Patrick is just as bad. Look at Rosie. He has no respect. Prank to girls like that. Mr. Ferensby? Mr. Whitmer, you have enough evidence to present your case for Madame Carlyle? No, not yet. Come and see me when you do. Looking good, looking good. Incredibly dangerous situation. Hey, Maybe so we should get back to it. Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. <sighs> Don't be stupid. She should have gone with a better surgeon. Symmetry. Symmetry of oh. Mr. Ferns be my... All right. Later. I bet he's stringing all the girls along like that anyway.
throat and all. Rosie, you need to forget about Patrick. No good's gonna come of it. Stick to your own uh -huh. kind. You mean like Chris? He treated me like shit. All he wanted to do was play his stupid video games. Never any romance. I deserve romance. How are things coming along inside? Is everything ready for tomorrow? I can't deal with all this pretend funeral stuff just now. I oh, know. Rosie, tell me what you did last night. I'm in trouble, aren't I? I... I spent the evening with Patrick. We met after dinner and I went home at one in the morning. He said he needed someone real to talk to. When he looks at Would you, you it makes you feel like the a few steps away from me, please? Like a real princess. But now he just ignores her. Well, he's under a lot of pressure. He's an idiot. That's what he is. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary? Any strangers outside the house? No, no, we saw no one outside, except Patrick's mother, Emma. We were sitting on the bench behind the greenhouse talking when she came out and um, we had to hide. You won't tell her about me and Patrick, will you? She'd insist Madame Carlyle fire me, I'm sure of it. Do right, she will. She's always going on about how things will change once she's in charge of Thornbridge Manor. So 41 guests will attend the funeral tomorrow. There's still a lot to see to, but we're... In good time, I think. I'm getting a headache from all the decisions. I mean, pram or stroller, comforter or not. Should I ask her to marry me? What she says, Mummy? I shouldn't gossip, but that Emma woman is a tad too busy for my taste. What is it? Elaine says she saw her on the top floor stroking the door to Alexa's office. I kid you not. She can't wait to get her hands on Thornbridge Manor. Mr. Fernsby? Mr. Whitmire, you have enough evidence to present your case for Madame Carlyle? No, not yet. Come and see me when you do.
May I get you anything, Mr. Patrick? Privacy? Maybe stop keeping an eye on me? Who put you up to this? Mother? Just doing my rounds. Right. God, I hate this place. I totally get why Zachary was such a weirdo. I'm losing it, and I only arrived yesterday. He didn't leave Thornbridge for 50 years. I'd prefer it if you didn't speak ill of the dead, Mr. Patrick. Yeah, well, if there's nothing good to say... Then you should hold your tongue. How's everything coming along, Elaine? Very well, Mr. Fursby. Make sure you focus on your work. I will. I don't need one more maid crying in the kitchen. So watch yourself around young Mr. Patrick. Don't worry about me. cigarette or something. Sure, I understand. All righty. I think you dropped something. token for a vault in the Milton Fitzpatrick London Bank. You need a pair, and you gain access no questions asked. I bet that's where Madame Carlyle keeps a copy of the Edwards file. Who carries the other one, I wonder? about Emma all the time, but she just makes me so angry. Tell me. She scolded Mary for not making the bed the way she did. Painkillers. Lethal, if you use enough of them. But not the poison used to kill Zachary. Of course, Madame Carlyle doesn't know that. Are you considering to frame the butler, 47? Zachary's diary. This is big. He was about to confess to the world that he and Alexa murdered their older brother Montgomery 46 years ago. And apparently, Mr. Fernsby helped make the murder look like an accident. And 47, the handwriting doesn't match the suicide letter in his room, proving he didn't write it himself. Mr. Fernsby clearly didn't. commit the murder, but I think you have enough evidence to convince Madame Carlyle he did.
like I can't breathe in there. The tension is off the charts. Everything needs to be ready for the funeral. It needs to look good for the family and all the Broken lab equipment. It looks like it was recently used, though. Never again meet someone like that. I can't bear to think of what happened to this rare plant now. I know, Oliver, I know. It's all too serious. I just think we've heard this song before, Jim, and we'll hear it again. And if you're just joining us, we're here with celebrity drama expert and vlogger Price Chamberlain. This is a table showing lethal dosages for the poison used to kill Zachary. Something is circled 47. Female, age 65 to 79, 60 to 64 kilograms. I'd say Madame Carlyle is next in line for a poisoning. You have uncovered enough evidence to tell Madame Carlyle that Emma is the murderer. Quite the detective, 47. I'm impressed. Can you just stand up, please? Maybe I should ask her out. Sir. I'm ready to present my conclusion. Very well. Let's talk in my office.
Please stay back. Please, go ahead. Your niece, Emma Carlyle, murdered your brother, Zachary. My niece? Emma is not my niece. She's my daughter-in-law. And your niece. Emma is the illegitimate child of your late older brother, Montgomery, who you and Zachary killed 46 years ago. That's preposterous. You asked me to find out what happened to Zachary. Would you rather not know? No. No, go on. I found a letter from Emmer's mother, Jane, who was the fiancé of your older brother at the time of his death. She witnessed how you and Zachary pushed him off the balcony. She believed you did it to steal the Carlisle Empire from her and her unborn child and she raised Emma to reclaim what she loved. Marry your heir, Gregory, get revenge, and secure the Carlisle Empire for her bloodline generations to come. Emma is the daughter of Montgomery and that local girl, Jane. She is. Well, the girl got it wrong. I didn't steal anything. I did what was necessary to protect the future of the Carlisles. Montgomery wasn't cut out to take over from father. All heart and no balls. Emma used the funeral gathering to speed up her installment as the lady of the house, seizing the opportunity to stage Zachary's suicide. She did her homework, used a poison made from one of Zachary's rare plants, found old floor plans from Thornbridge Manor to gain access to his room through a secret passage. That scheming. Bitch. More than you think. I found proof that she will try to poison you next. Well, I'll have to take care of that. Thank you, Mr. Whitmer. You have not disappointed. I promised you I would reward you generously if you solved the case. So, what do you suggest? I want the file you have on Arthur Edwards. Edwards, the constant. But how do you... Oh, I see. I expected you might show up. But to kill me, not help me. But I've been wrong on so many things lately, so why not this one? I will give you the file on Edwards. You've earned it. I don't suppose I could convince you to deal with my daughter-in-law now you're here. I would like to see her dead. No? What a shame. I'll have to see to it some other way then. The file you want is in the safe. God, I. I need some privacy. How are you, sir? Thank you. Good work, 47. That's the file on Arthur Edwards secured. Time to take care of Madame Carlyle. What? Ah. Oh, Mission complete. Well done, 47. Just keep calm. I can't forget his eyes. They were so swollen, it didn't even look like Zachary. I've never seen a face like this.
47. They're everywhere. Go, get out! It's the Constantine. Shit! Stay down. Boss wants you alive. Yeah? How about now? Over here! Cover me! Walk away! <laughs> or what? You gonna take us all on? Don't. Tell the Constant to start running! You think you've won? 47 is out there. And 47 never misses his mark. Neither do you, Miss Burnwood. That's what makes you valuable. You're delusional. You think I would betray 47? Trust me. You owe him nothing. What is this? I told you we could help each other, and I meant it. I'll look forward to your call. Gray is gone. Go to Berlin and stay out of sight. We're all that's left now. <laughs>